Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter along with April Holeider behind the camera. Today we're on campus. It's a little moist outside. Uh, it's just before homecoming. This is a recording. You're seeing it after that. But today we're going to highlight the uniqueness of the Purdue campus and being the cradle of astronauts. 24 astronauts have graduated from here and uh, we're so fortunate that we're able to meet and greet and see and get to know a lot of the astronauts and their families. And so that's what we're going to talk about today in that uh, uh, we're going to highlight one of those relationships. Um, and that is that I met Indy Foisel, who's going to be waiting for us up on the porch um, uh, back in October of 2007. We're actually coming to you from the front of Meredith Hall today. Here's the historical piece about Meredith. Uh, opened up in 1952, named for Virginia Meredith, the first female trustee. She was known as the Queen of Agriculture in her time, uh, dedicated to, for women, intended for women, but actually men were here for the first six years uh, or so because of the, uh, of the demand. After six years, they moved to Wiley, and it's been women. Uh, now we have 620 women living in uh, Meredith Hall, and in its day, it won awards for its design because it's in the shape of an X, and from an efficiency standpoint, uh, uh, it really was uh, highlighted. Now we're walking up the steps, and look who's going to be meeting us here, and it's Indy Foisto. Indy Foisto. Hey, Indy. Welcome you? back to campus. Thank you so nice much. to have you here. Nice it's to have you here. Uh, met Indy and Drew back in October of the of 07, as I mentioned, at the dedication, and we've stayed in touch through our travel experiences and through uh, Drew's three missions as the boys and as our families have grown up. And as we travel, we've traveled extensively. A lot of trips to Prague and Russia uh, for her family, and that's what we want to talk about. So we'll start, Indy, with here we are at Meredith Hall, and you were a resident assistant, uh, actually a residence hall counselor, uh, back in the day, right here in Meredith Hall. This is kind of where you got some of your starts. So tell us a little bit about that counselor experience. Sure. Um, I'm so thankful. First of all, I'm a very proud Boilermaker. Who isn't, right? And... Uh, Becoming a, a, an RA um, was one of the best things that could have happened to me um, in many ways. Uh, first of all, it gave you such great leadership skills, and you were also a liaison. Um, so you reported to university administrators. So you were responsible for 60-some students, and um, there was a lot of growth. And uh, I learned a lot about myself and about others. And so um, it was a terrific launching off point for uh, future experiences. I <laughs> <laughs> like that. that. That's good. And were you, where were you assigned? Did you know the unit that you were in? Yes. Yeah, so I was um, on the second floor in the corner. And I had a beautiful view of the front lawn. And it just was, uh, I, I really loved that. Again, it's nice to be coming from the porch of Meredith Hall, the Adirondack Chairs. I think there must be very few residence halls in the country that have its own front porch like this. <laughs> and so that's why we've stayed here to highlight that. Now your career, a speech language pathologist, very successful in the Houston area with some high profile clients. Tell us a little bit about that if you could. Sure. Um, so I've been a speech language pathologist for 28 years now. And um, I specialize in the adult neurogenic population. I've worked on a traumatic brain injury team. I've worked with uh, patients with strokes, um, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. Um, also, pediatrics, pretty much the whole uh, the age spectrum and uh, disorders spectrum. Um, but uh, I, in 2011, uh, former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords um, was shot, and um, that was uh, a very tragic time because her husband, Mark Kelly, was Drew's uh, commander. And, um, but I was very fortunate to be able to um, be on her speech language pathology team, and I'm so happy to report um, that Gabby is doing amazingly well, and um, she continues to inspire me every day. That's, that's a great contribution right there. <laughs> those many years. Uh, moving on to uh, the area of sports and tennis. She's, uh, I understand, a highly sought after tennis instructor <laughs> in the Houston area. Uh, has been playing tennis uh, most of her life. Tell us a little bit about that. I guess starting maybe even at the Sure. So um, 
I've been playing tennis since I was 10, so not that long. <laughs> but uh, um, I come from a tennis playing family. We would watch Wimbledon, U.S. Open, everything on the couches and uh, squeeze in for room. And um, I have a nephew that plays for LSU and uh, on tennis scholarship. And I actually had made it as a as a walk on here at Purdue. At Purdue. Yes. Wow. Nice going. <laughs> Thank you. Nice going. <laughs> Taught a lot of uh, kids and adults through my lifetime. Right. And, yeah. and I have to say, as I did my research, uh, you do get access to some great tennis tournaments. In fact, the Wimbledon, if I recall, looking at the awarding ceremony for the men's double, is that you in the background? Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. So uh -huh. we were very fortunate. Um, uh, while Drew was in space, I wanted to bring along a whole other um, audience um, that may not be uh, may not be aware um, as to how much STEM is in their sport, right? I thought, let's bring the tennis players and athletes along on our journey. I wasn't sure if it would be Drew's last mission. Um, and so I collaborated with uh, Wimbledon and the U.S. Open through uh, uh, with NASA. And uh, Drew became the first person to play tennis in space uh, with his crew, and that was kind of fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, we were uh, graciously invited back to um, to present uh, two medallions that were used in the uh, coin toss at the women's finals and men's finals of Wimbledon. Oh, excellent. And then I have to talk about the U.S. Open. Yes. And there, there you were on the jumbotron. Oh no. <laughs> yes. And I think it was, if you're on the jumble time, you got to do something, and you started dancing. Yes, and, yes. And so it was quite a, uh, quite a nice dance with you and your friends over there. <laughs> it uh, was a lot of fun, and usually when when you get put on the jumb jumbotron, it's either for like a quick pa a, a kiss or something, or you do something for a few seconds, but that jumbotron camera person was uh, was phenomenal. They gave us a little moment. They performed, I can tell you. You have to look that one up if you can. Uh, then let's move on to the American Heart Association. I know that's near and dear, one of the top fundraisers in the Houston area as a team captain and that sort of thing. Give us a little bit about that if you can. Sure, sure. So, um, of course my patients and their families have inspired me. They've had heart disease, um, stroke, but personally my father, we almost lost my father when he was 65. He had a massive heart attack. My brother saved him with CPR and another doctor came out to help. Um, and uh, you know, he's had two strokes um, and through atrial fibrillation, and yet we were able to celebrate my dad's 84th birthday. He's still going strong, and we're so happy to, uh, to see how well he's doing. And so that um, you know, it kind of propelled me to want to um, to give back to the American Heart Association. So this will be my 21st AHA Heart Walk. Trying to raise twenty-seven thousand dollars this year, and getting there. And you've always been a yes. wonderful <laughs> supporter, and I appreciate it. And uh, you know, one person, one family member uh, at a time, and we'll get there. And over the course of the twenty years that I've um, been fundraising, I think I think we're up to, to almost two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And it's it's, it's this is uh, it, you know, John's been a part of my team, and. Uh, I thank all my donors and all my future donors. You may want to join. You may want to join. Okay. Then lastly, another role is the project manager for Team Foist in <laughs> yes. terms of the family uh, with an astronaut still active mm -hmm. and two growing sons who I know now are doing interesting things. Tell us about that. Okay, so yes, uh, I consider myself team captain of Team Foistel, and it really is. It's, it's a, a real team effort. As much as people think, you know, when you have a spouse that's an astronaut, that you're just you're there just to support. But obviously, um, Drew's been a huge supporter of mine as well, and being able to um, have my career. And uh, but my my most important job I've always felt is raising two new human beings in the world and how important that is. And I'm very, very proud of Drew and, uh, and our sons, Ari and Aiden. Ari's 25, he's uh, an ensign in the Navy, and he wants to fly uh, fighter jets. So he's got to study hard. <laughs> and Aiden is now um, first year medical school at Baylor College of Medicine. And uh, I'm watching how 
I'm so proud of them both. They're, they're working really hard. Accomplishments there. A little bit proud, Mama here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as it should be. So, uh, so what a what a what a great career in your own right, and that's what we really wanted to highlight today. And the closeness again that you that you get to be with astronauts and families and that sort of thing. To the point that I can tell you that when Drew came back from his six month mission from the International Space Station, several of us here made sure he had some good West Lafayette pizza to eat. We actually shipped pizza from a local provider. We can't say? <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that an NASA rule? Oh. Uh, Maybe not. Yeah. Marty's Pizza. We I shipped. didn't say it. <laughs> it was great. Thanks to Brad Cohen, we shipped some Marty's Pizza, uh, waiting for their for them in Houston as they got back. Some real down-to-earth food, if you will. Yeah, so you guys paid for it, so you can say whatever you okay. want. Okay. <laughs> We're sensitive about that here. So, so well, great. Great sharing time with you. Anything else you'd like to add? Sure. Or? I hope that you'll follow our journey, and I think um, April will be able to put it, um, put our uh, social media contacts. You'll see some wonderful videos of uh, launch, landing, and everything in between. And uh, when Drew came back, uh, you know, just to see what it was like when he did some of the uh, the testing, the physical testing, and things like that. There's some. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty emotional things as well. It's just, I guess. You know. Yeah. You know, one thing I did want to mention that when he was in the space station, you think that he's up there and he's solitary, uh -huh. and there's not much communication taking place. You guys were in touch quite a bit. Yeah. So we were, we're very fortunate now. It's, it's changed. It's advanced, just like everything else. Um, he was able to call down um, at least once a day, and once a day. It was only. It was one way though. I couldn't call him and say. <laughs> You know, What's going on? Yeah. When you get back, you have to get the milk again, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. But yeah, so it's what uh, once or maybe multiple times sometimes, and then um, uh, we had email communication. It was much more instantaneous. Sometimes we on shuttle program we had to wait half a day um, for an email to go through, and then on the weekends we had video conferencing. So uh, Drew and the boys would come on. We'd have an hour, and so that was really wonderful. That's amazing. It really was wonderful. That really was amazing. Yeah. Very interesting. The one other yes. thing that I wanted to say is um, you can tell the friendships that we make here at Purdue, and they're really lifelong, and we are proud Boilermakers, Drew and I, and um, we, we want to support as much as we can, and we always look forward to coming back, and uh, we're... We're here this week uh, through the Executive and Residence Program and for the Purdue Astronaut Reunion and Homecoming. So, yes. boiler up. <laughs> big weekend, big weekend. Great. Thanks, Indy. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. On behalf of April, hail Purdue. <laughs>